Hello and welcome to Sandwich Technology School. My name's Charlotte Rendell and this is Monty Mitford and we're both extremely proud to be the head students here at STS and we hope you enjoy what we have to show you today. Usually we'd be opening our doors to you for open evenings and open mornings, however due to the COVID-19 pandemic we can't do that this year, so we'll be making this video instead. We can't wait to give you a flavour of what our school has to offer, showing you some lessons, showing you some key aspects of the school, also showing you some Year 7s who have only been here for their first few weeks. We'd like to make the transition between primary school and secondary school as easy as possible and give you some advice on how to apply for your son or daughter's position. We understand what a big decision this is and we'd love to help you. Both Monty and I really enjoyed our time here at SCS and we hope that your child could too. So, if you have any queries or questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. However, could you sit back, relax and enjoy watching our school from the comfort of your own home? So here we are in this really unusual situation of, of making a video to try and um, convince potential Year 7 students next year and their parents why they should choose us as uh, over other secondary schools. Um, so let's see where it takes us. Well, I think a very good place to start is with the school motto, hold fast that which mm. is good. And I know you feel very strongly about this, don't you? Um, I know it was introduced initially in the, the 1930s when the school opened, but that was one of your first actions as head teacher, wasn't it, to, to bring that motto back? Mm. Well, it's, it's actually a biblical quote, um, but it's not because of religion that it, it's relevant here. And, and the whole quote is actually, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Um, but the prove all things bit, it doesn't mean prove all things in a mathematical, scientific way. It means try all things or test all things and, and the term hold fast which of course is quite an old-fashioned expression actually means hold on tight to so the whole thing together means try all things give them a go decide which of those things you value and you think are good and then hold on to them and as educators in schools what we do is try to teach the students as much knowledge and give them as many experiences as possible and help them independently decide the things that they value most so that they can hold on fast to it. And I think that ultimately that motto is the very essence of what we do. And the hold fast acrostic is the values that we have for the students, what they need to know as they move from childhood into adulthood and go and face that world. Um, it's what we want for our learners. And you can see that in the classroom, can't you? There's a very strong balance between the skills and the knowledge that we want the young people to have. We recognise that skills are important. Um, we need students to be able to be strong communicators, to be able to work together, to solve problems. We know that these are the skills that employers will want and they'll need for their future lives. But equally, we recognise that knowledge is hugely crucial too. Um, students need to have a bank of knowledge that will enable them to learn as they go through their lives and even if the knowledge isn't 100% relevant to the career that they do, it's good to have that level of knowledge, good to be an educated person and good to have that to rely on. It helps you to learn as you go through the rest of your academic career and into the world of work. I think we've got that balanced view on technology as well, haven't we? We know the benefits of technology. As a technology school, we've got our website, we've got EduLink so the parents can see what homework is being set, and we've got the useful tool of parent pay. But we also know that young people can be too reliant on technology, and that unfortunately leads to a very detrimental effect on mental health. It's one of the main reasons why we've brought in our mobile phone ban, which is strict but popular. Um, so these students are going to be sitting exams that are pen and paper exams and that's why most of our lessons need to be done in that tried and tested traditional way. Mm, that's very true. Simon, I think maybe our year six pair, uh, students and their parents would like to know about our curriculum or what subjects they'd be doing if they came to us. Absolutely. Well, I'd urge all students and parents to look on the website, to look at our curriculum statement to find full details of the subjects we offer. But when students join us in Year 7, they'll embark on what we call the 
SDS Baccalaureate, which is unique to this school, and it represents that body of knowledge which we feel that all students should have, all students should acquire by the end of year nine. So it comprises of English, maths, science, history, geography, languages, the arts and technology. All the subjects that we feel are the key components of what it means to be an educated person. But in addition, we've got some other subjects that perhaps um, aren't always studied elsewhere. For example, in year seven, they have what we call a SPAG lesson, spelling, punctuation and grammar. We, we feel that's highly important, that they have a good grounding in those skills. They're relevant to all their other subject areas. We have SMSC, or Social, Moral, Spiritual and Cultural Education. Now this is a blend of religious education, but also looking at the wider aspects of, of moral and social behaviour. This is about preparing people to be successful as adults, to learn how to behave in society. And it's a key feature and a very distinctive feature of our curriculum. I think it's also worth mentioning health as well. Uh, we have health lessons throughout Key Stage 3 because we also believe in students staying safe and making those the right choices about lifestyles. When it comes to Year 10 and students have the chance to specialise with their GCSE choices, um, we have a wide range of courses both there, the GCSE and A level, both very traditional academic subjects but also technical or vocational subjects as well, very well suited to the world of work. Of course we have all of our extracurricular activities as well. We know that the learning doesn't just happen in the classroom. We've got our brilliant school productions, Legally Blonde and We Will Rock You, um, our theatre trips, a lot of sporting fixtures, we seem to have a lot of outside speakers come in and visit us, um, as well as the very popular World War One battlefields trip. Uh, really far too many to name here. Mm. And of course I think we have to um, mention our exam results. And this year our top 10 performers in both GCSE and A level did um, incredibly well. But it was nice that actually this is the third year in the row that in both A level and GCSE our results have improved and got better and better. Now we do of course realise that this year the exam results have been quite controversial and that it's been all over the media but we know that as a school we worked really really hard to ensure that those assessments that we sent off to the exam board were realistic and that students actually deserved what they got and therefore we're very very proud of what they achieved. 88% um, of our A level grades this year were grades A star to C and 61% of our year 11 cohort got a grade 4 or better, so that's grade C or better in both English and maths which is of course fantastic and I think our really top performing A, uh, a level and GCSE results are competitive with those from grammar schools. Um, and I think that that's a really important point because we push our students and we want them to do as well as they possibly can. But I think the other thing to, whilst mentioning grammar schools that's important, is sometimes parents will ask us if we, like other local non-selective schools, have a grammar school stream. And of course the answer is no. And there are two very good reasons for that. And that's one, we're not a grammar school and we're not pretending to be one. But also, we have a very carefully structured setting process that works across all subjects to make sure that our students are being taught appropriately and challenged. And the truth is, our exam results are clearly showing that this is a strategy that works. Don't forget the parents who want to know about Ofsted mm. as well. And we had our last inspection in May 2019 and we're very proud of the comments that were made in that inspection report and we felt that they recognised the improvements the school has made and continues to make. I would urge all parents to look at that and read that Ofsted report and there's a link on our website to, to access that. Mm. What the students think is important too. I know they are very proud of being part of this school and they enjoy really positive working relationships with the staff and I think here we all work very hard together. Mm. That's very, very true and actually a very good point. I think maybe having spoken about why we think the Year 6 students and their parents should choose us, maybe we should pause and hear what the Year 7 students, who let's face it, have only been here a couple of weeks, um, let's ask them what they think.
I feel like I've settled in really well, th thanks to the great member of staff and I've made friends very easily. After a while you become more confident around the school and you settle in a lot more. You've always got people there that are helping to support you and you feel a lot more confident about what lessons you've got or how you handle them. I've only got lost a couple of times and whenever I have been lost, the first time I did get lost when I was looking for a classroom, I was super worried because, you know, I was like, well, who do I ask? Do I ask a pupil? Do I ask a teacher? But after that, I knew that I could ask other people. I could ask either sixth form students, other people around the school, um, teachers, um, and they would direct me straight to my classroom, either telling me my directions or actually physically taking me there. I felt like I've been supported really well. And um, I think that the, the teachers, are, I, I know now the teachers are always, after being the two weeks, I know the teachers are always there to help me. And, and um, the people are always there to guide me. And yeah, and I've made friends, as I said, really easily. My tutor group, yeah, that, that's, been, that's been nice. Um, the um, form tutor has been really helpful. I, if I, if I, I haven't been afraid to ask questions. Good. I've always that's asked really questions. Good. That's good to know. Yeah, on Transition Day back in July, that was a big help because they spoke to you and they talked you through everything that will go on at the school. But the form tutors and like the people, the head of year seven, head of years, they're really helpful because if you ever had a problem, they will always be there to talk to you and they will come up with a solution to prevent anything bad from happening. So having thought and explored together the ideas about why the, the students and the parents should choose us. I think it's worth taking a moment to think about what they can expect if they choose us. And of course, as you know, we do have a homeschool agreement in place. In fact, I've got a copy for you here, actually. I'll just give it for you. And as you know, the homeschool agreement is um, signed by all students and parents um, and it just is about us working in partnership. School, home, parents working towards that common goal of the students doing as well as they possibly can so that they leave school happy and well-educated young people. We ask the parents support good attendance and punctuality. We ask that they make sure the students are properly equipped. We ask that they support students with their learning and homework. We ask that they support the school's code of conduct and other policies. We ask that they attend parents' evening and other events. And that also the parents let us know if there are any other problems. And the students need to know that their education is their responsibility. We ask them to follow the school's code of conduct be punctual and have good attendance. We ask them to do all their classwork and homework as well as they can, bring their equipment and wear correct school uniform, and be polite and respectful and embrace those hold fast values. Mm. And I think the students and parents in turn need to know what they can expect from us. And as a school, we will do everything we can to ensure that every child achieves their potential and feels valued and we will provide high quality teaching and homework. We will care for the students' happiness and well-being, which as we know is hugely important. We will do everything we can to promote a healthy lifestyle and to encourage the students to make positive contributions. And of course we need to communicate effectively with parents and ensure that our students, all of them, adhere to our school policies across the school. And I think with these three parts of the homeschool agreement in place, when we all do our bit, we know our students can do really well here. I wonder if this is a good opportunity to hear some more from our students. Yes, I think so. Um, the lessons have been really, really fun. Like the science has gotten a lot more interesting and I also like technology and Spanish. I didn't do, I only did like one lesson of French at the, my entire time in primary school, so would I count that as a new one? Absolutely. Yeah, so that, <laughs> I'll count that one as a new one. And also computing is also a new one. I quite enjoy them because we get like a lot of support from like teachers, so if we're like struggling we'll put up our hands and they'll come over and they just like are really supportive, even if you may struggle and all that, they'll just be like, there, they'll be helping you. When I first came here I was like, 
the hair mask would be so hard, I can't do it. But I got in, I was like, I've got this, and then I'm like, I find it quite easy. Like, obviously there's still a challenge in it, but I just liked it, it's really fun. Be specialists, I find it's better than primary school, because primary school you had like, maybe two or three teachers, well that's what it was like in my school, and you'd have to remember like all the subjects, however you have specialists, they only have to remember French, or they only have to remember BE. So we sincerely hope by now that we've managed to convince our year six students and their parents why we are the school of choice for them. Um, but I think it's worth taking a moment, having hopefully convinced them that, to think about how they go about choosing us. Well, the full admission policy can be found on the school website. Um, for next September, we have 255 places available. Um, although we know we always get more applications than actual spaces. So I think it's important that parents know what the next steps are. Parents need to go onto the Kent County Council website and complete a common secondary application form. They need to do this by the 2nd of November. On the form, they need to list their top six schools and to put them in rank order. And then Kent will inform parents of the outcome by March. Mm. And I think I'm often at this time of year asked advice by parents and what they're worrying about is how to rank those schools to get the best option depending on a variety of different circumstances. And I think my advice is always to just keep it simple. Put the school that you would most like your son and daughter to go to most first. Put the school that you would like them to go to next second and so on, just keep it very, very simple. And I think the other thing that maybe some parents may ask us about is the SDS aptitude test, because of course we've done it in the past, but we are no longer doing that. And the reason is we're not a, we are a non-selective school, uh, no tests involved, and it's important I think that the year six students and their parents know that we welcome everybody and we will do our very best for every single one of them. Well, that brings it to the end of the video. I hope it's helped you choose where to send your children. Um, just below us, yes, they're running around practicing their fire drill, but they're also very keen to have to say goodbye and to wish you well when choosing the next school for your child. Thank you very much for watching, um, and we hope that you choose to join our community very soon.